We're here to idea everyone, to fire up your curiosity and connect you with the people and ideas that shape our world. Watch, listen, understand, connect, create. Let's move the human story forward together. Hello and welcome to The Poetry of Science, a podcast which provides insight into new scientific research via the medium of poetry. I'm your host, Dr. Sam Illingworth, and each week I'll be introducing you to some of the latest scientific findings and sharing a selection of science-themed poetry. We could all do with a little bit more poetry in our lives. In this episode, I'll be exploring new research, which has found a sharp decline in basking shark sightings in California. Double fins paint zigs and zags on saline canvas sheets. Tips and tails snaking offshore rhymes that converge in truth beneath those broken, haunted waves. Moving mountains of the sea, your fearsome enormity matched only by a magnitude of grace. Congregations of krill consumed with the care of a lover's caress. We wave to you from weathered skies blinking in the sun to find you never really there at all. This poem is inspired by recent research published in Frontiers in Marine Science, which has shown that there has been a striking decrease in basking shark sightings in the California current ecosystem. The basking shark is the second largest fish in the ocean, second only to the whale shark, with adults typically reaching up to 8 metres or around 26 foot in length. This species also has the smallest weight-for-weight brain size of any shark, reflecting its relatively passive lifestyle. For comparison, their brains are about 10 centimetres in length. Despite their formidable size and appearance, many of the behaviours of these animals are still uncertain, as they tend to lead relatively secretive and migratory lifestyles. For example, it is not known for certain how long they live, where they mate, or where they give birth. The basking shark has long been a commercially important fish as a source of food and animal feed, and overexploitation has resulted in the shark being classified as a vulnerable species on the IUCN red list. Fishing for basking sharks is now prohibited in the United States, Mexico and Canada, yet despite these protections, sightings in the California current ecosystem have decreased dramatically since the mid-1900s, when basking sharks were regularly observed in their thousands each year of California's coast. In this new study, researchers examined systematic aerial surveys conducted by NOAA fisheries between 1962 and 1997, using additional sources such as fisheries data, tagging and public observations from between 1973 and 2018 to complement these surveys. From the records of the aerial surveys, it was found that nearly 4,000 sharks were sighted per year until the 1990s, after which no aerial sightings at all were observed. The additional sources reported less than 100 sightings of basking sharks per year after 1990, with the study also revealing that group sizes had declined from around 57 individuals per group in the 1960s to just over three in the last decade. The researchers also found a significant shift in when sightings occurred, from fall and spring in the early years of observations to the summer months after the 2000s. It is still unclear exactly what is driving these trends although this study found a significant link between basking shark presence and environmental factors such as sea surface temperature, the availability of prey, and climatic effects such as El Nino. The study concludes that a lack of monitoring may also play a role in reduced sightings, and that coordinating the documentation of basking shark deaths and sightings throughout the Pacific Basin could be used to create more robust population estimates. However, it is clear that future research and conservation efforts are needed to help protect these giants of the ocean. Now that you've heard the science, let me read the poem to you again. Double fins paint zigs and zags on saline canvas sheets, tips and tails snaking offshore rhymes that converge in truth beneath those broken, haunted waves. 
moving mountains of the sea, your fearsome enormity matched only by a magnitude of grace. Congregations of krill consumed with the care of a lover's caress. We wave to you from weathered skies, blinking in the sun to find you never really there at all. In this section of the podcast, I'd like to share a poem written by another poet on a topic related to the science that has been discussed so far. In this episode, I'll be reading Baskin Shark by Norman McCaig. Norman McCaig was a Scottish poet and teacher. He was born in Edinburgh in 1910. He attended the Royal High School and in 1928 went to the University of Edinburgh, graduating in 1932 with a degree in classics. He divided his time for the rest of his life between his native city of Edinburgh and Assant in the Scottish Highlands. His poetry collections include The Inward Eye, published in 1946, Rings on a Tree, published in 1968, The World's Room, published in 1974, and The Equal Skies, published in 1980. His various awards and accolades include the Queen's Gold Medal for Poetry, the Colmondelli Award, and the Order of the British Empire. McKay died in Edinburgh in 1996, at the age of 85. Basking Shark, by Norman McKay. To stub an oar on a rock where none should be, to have it rise with a slounge out of the sea, is a thing that happened once, too often to me. But not too often, though enough, I count as gain that once I met on a sea intact with rain, that room-sized monster with a matchbox brain. He displaced more than water, he shoggled me, centuries back, this decadent towny shook on a rom branch of his family tree. Swish up the dirt and when it settles a spring is all the clearer. I saw me in one fling emerging from the slime of everything. So who's the monster? The thought made me grow pale for twenty seconds while sail after sail the tall fin slid away and then the tail. Thank you for listening to the Poetry of Science. Thank you very much for being with us for this episode of the Idea Me Show. Idea Me is a global platform. Our mission is to move the human story forward by sharing knowledge of the future. You can find us on all major audio networks at www.radioideame.com, on YouTube and Vimeo. Please subscribe.